Quality grading is an estimate of how good the lean meat is going to taste. Taste appeal, tenderness, juiciness, and flavor. Those are what quality grade is supposed to be uh, estimating. And we don't mean exactly estimate because we know that it doesn't do a job of always saying that prime is always better than choice and choice is always better than select. It's an estimate of how good the lean meat is going to taste. Then secondly, we'll talk about yield grade. Yield grade is an estimate of how much lean is in that animal and how much fat and bone we're going to have to throw away. When we look at quality grades for older animals, particularly those we might call cows, cows would go commercial, utility, cutter, and canner. Those are the quality grades for those particular animals. For the young animals, which we are more attuned to because most of the feedlot animals are almost all going to be A maturity, 94% of the cattle are the very youngest maturity score, A maturity. That's 9 to 30 months of age. Those animals are in that category with probably about 6% in the B maturity, 4 to 6% in the B and maybe a few older. But almost all of our cattle are in the younger maturity grades. And those cattle for those grades are A, uh, for A maturity, are prime, choice, select, and standard. Well, how do we determine maturity, first of all? Well, a grader will stand on a grading chain in a packing plant and carcasses will pass by that grader at about the rate of one every 10 to 12 seconds. And so he's got to look at this carcass to determine a host of different factors that evaluate the quality grade and yield grade of the animal. For quality grade and maturity in particular, he's going to look at something very quickly that he can grasp a hold of to see the age of that animal. And if you notice this side that's next to me, this, this animal is split right down the middle and it exposes something called the backbone. Uh, the chine buttons on the backbone. That's a term that we use in the industry of these little white buttons. They're called chine buttons. And as an animal gets older, those white, soft cartilage tissue turn into bone. And so a grader can actually look and say, where does that ossification stop? Ossification is a process of cartilage turning into bone. And it actually starts from the round end and works its way all the way down to the forequarter, to the chuck. And so he can look and say, in these buttons, where does that ossification stop? And he can determine the age of the animal fairly closely. All of the animals that you're going to see later in the program are going to be A maturity. So we're really going to just concentrate on those younger animals, 9 to 30 months of age, which is about 94% of the population that is fed in the feedlots in the United States. So this animal is young, has white, soft cartilage at the end of the backbone, which we call chine buttons. Also, we look at the lean maturity when we look at the age of the animal. And as an animal gets older, the color goes from a bright cherry red color to a darker color. And this is a bright cherry red color, so this is a young, a maturity animal. Then the next factor that we look at for quality grade is marbling. And a grader will stand on the line, and uh, before he actually gets up on the chain, he'll take these cards out. These are official USDA marbling charts, and he'll take a look at them. And he basically can take a look and see, by looking at the chart, what is the minimum level of marbling for an animal that's A maturity that would grade choice. That's a small amount of marbling. And he has a picture here that says small zero. That would be the minimum amount of marbling that you can have and have an A maturity uh, carcass that would grade choice. There's another picture called slight, slight zero. That's the minimum amount of marbling for the select grade. And then there's another one called slightly abundant. And that's the minimum amount of marbling for the carcass that's A maturity to go into the prime grade. So he'll look at the flex of fat inside this muscle. This carcass has been separated between the 12th rib and the 13th rib. And it's exposed this rib by. And he'll evaluate the marbling that's in that picture to determine the final quality grade of that particular carcass. And this carcass has a slight amount of marbling. And therefore, A maturity, slight amount of marbling, it would go USDA select. Well, that's enough on quality grading. Now let's go on to yield grading. Yield grading, as we said, is an estimate of the amount of lean and the amount of bone and fat that we get out of that carcass. How much are we going to throw away and how much are we going to get to keep in the form of saleable retail product? The real definition of yield grade is the percent closely trimmed, boneless, retail product from the round, loin, rib, and chuck. It also is a good estimate of total carcass lean. And some packers you may hear refer to uh, red meat yield. 
or lean meat yield. Those are all fairly highly related to the yield grade of the animal. The factors that go into the yield grade, because we can't take this side and we can't separate it out in total lean fat and bone, what we have to do instead is use indicators. And we've got this nice 13th, 12th, 13th rib cross section that exposes a ribeye. And the way we do that is we'll take the ribeye, we've ribbed it just for marbling. We've already talked about that in quality grade. Well, in yield grade, we use the same surface for one of the major factors in the yield grade equation, which is uh, fat thickness. And we'll go from the bottom of the eye to the top. We'll go three quarters of the distance from the backbone, and we'll take a measurement at that point. So the grader, he won't use a probe. He uses his eyeball, but we'll just put a probe up there right now, and you can tell that this particular carcass has about six tenths fat thickness. Now, a grader, after looking at that, he'll say, does that one measurement truly represent what I see in the rest of the carcass? And he calls that adjusted fat thickness. And so he'll look at things like up here in the round area, and he'll look down over the loin edge, and he'll look down over the clawed region of the carcass, and then he'll look over the brisket region of the carcass, and then up in the clod or udder region, depending on whether it's a steer or a heifer to try to determine does that one measurement that he sees there truly represent what he sees in the carcass. And he does that very quickly. But luckily there's a fairly high relationship between what you see here and the total carcass fatness. So 12th rib fat thickness is the starting point of the yield grade. We call it preliminary yield grade or you might hear it referred to as PYG. The next factor that we look at is the ribeye area which is just this one single muscle on this particular carcass. Just this one muscle. Doesn't include the muscle, these little muscles along the rib or down in this, just this one single muscle. And that is a pretty good indication of total carcass fatness. And really, the yield grade equation uses it in a way that it looks at ribeye area in relationship to carcass weight. As an animal gets heavier, it should naturally have a larger ribeye. And so they'll look at the ribeye area and they'll measure it in relationship to the carcass weight. Let me ask you this question. We had two carcasses, one carcass that had a 600-pound carcass weight and one that had an 800-pound carcass weight. Both of those carcasses had a 14-square-inch ribeye. Okay, which of those two carcasses is going to be more muscular? Well, of course, the one with a 600-pound carcass weight because it shouldn't have as large a ribeye as this 800-pound, but they have the same ribeye, 600, 200 pounds lighter, same ribeye size, Therefore, that tells us that, that carcass is more muscular and should have a more desirable yield grade. So carcass weight and ribeye area are two other factors that go into the yield grade equation. The final factor that goes into the yield grade equation is just pure fat. It's internal fat, or what we refer to as kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. And that's the fat in the carcass that you see up here in the pelvic region, then the fat right along the kidney, and then the fat in the heart region. You put those together and you'll come up with a figure. What percent of that carcass is in the form of kidney, pelvic, and heart fat? And most cattle are probably going to be somewhere between one and a half to three percent kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. And of course the real range is quite wider, but most cattle going to from a feedlot to a packer will probably be somewhere in that range. This carcass weighs about 800 pounds. And let's say it had two and a half percent kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. Well, that tells us that this carcass has somewhere around 20, 22 pounds of kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. That would be 2.5%. Another way to look at it is you know that every 800 pounds on an 800-pound carcass, every 8 pounds is 1%. Therefore, if this carcass had 16 pounds of kidney, pelvic, and heart fat, it would be 2%. If it had 24 pounds, it would be 3%. And so that's what kidney, pelvic, and heart fat is. What percent of that carcass is in the form of fat in the kidney, pelvic, and heart regions of the carcass? All of those factors are put together, and they come up with a final yield grade. And that yield grade will range anywhere from a yield grade 1, which is the lowest or best, to yield grade 5, which is the fattest and the least desirable yield grade. 1's the leanest, and 5 is the fattest. Okay, to finish our yield grade discussion, I wanted to just show you two carcasses. What, I ha what we have here today is a yield grade 4 over here and a yield grade 3. And I think hopefully you can see that there's quite a bit more outside fat on this yield grade 4 
in the shield grade three. So remember, one's the best and five's the worst. Now that fat, as we can show in the rest of the carcass, as we look at the round, you can see some differences in the round, and as we look in the brisket region of the carcass, you can see that uh, that one fat measurement that we saw at the 12th, 13th rib really crossed over in the rest of the carcass, and that uh, it relates very well to total carcass fatness. Also, you can see some muscularity differences in the round. That relates also to what you see in the loin eye. And so these are two carcasses that are quite drastically different as far as the percent lean or red meat yield in the carcass. And therefore, the three, in this particular case, would be much more desirable than yield grade four.